My father was very strong and it had been really a good life financially and everything up until the 70s when the Carter administration put a, an embargo on the Russians and we couldn't sell the grain that we had contracted to them. Those who can remember it, it was just chaos. The markets went down limit day after day after day uh, and it absolutely broke us. Some woke me was a shining light Coming in from the past The farmers that we owed money to, we weren't able to pay, and I went out and saw them. My father, he was so honorable that he couldn't stand the fact that he uh, owed these people that we went to church with, that we grew up with, and had dealt with for years. And we had Baltimore lawyers that gave us advice, and he didn't take it. They wanted to, to write a plan for Chapter 11 to reorganize and maybe pay 50 cents on a dollar or 40. And I came home and told him, and he said, see, we're going to pay him all we owe him and 8% interest. And uh, he said, we have to sell the farms, and we did. We had a lot of farmland. And in fact, uh, my father was the largest landowner in the county until this all happened. And then we liquidated a bunch of farms. I told the lawyers that he wanted to pay 8%. They looked at each other like, and I said, he won't do anything different. There were some tough decisions after that. Uh, we always had milk cows, we always had hogs, we had laying hens as well as broilers. We saw the potential with the grain and that's what we went with, grain and fertilizer. And it's been a, I, I honestly, I think God led us to that direction because I would not have in my own wisdom had said, hey, this is not gonna work, but this will. And it, it's just been good and we've had a lot of success and the business continues to grow, the boys are back. I remember we would close at six. For cash flow, we would hop in trucks and deliver two loads of grain to towns, towns and right? yeah. just to have the money to pay the farmers just to keep the wheels turning. Sometimes it seemed like the trajectory was going positively and that things were going well because we didn't really understand the details of what was going on. And then sometimes I felt like maybe six months later there was a tidal wave and we were starting <laughs> all the way over from the very beginning and I could never understand, you know, when are we going to just keep, you know, going north. It took so about 20 years. No, I so I, really you know, did. I went off to college <laughs> yeah. not, not knowing, you know, what, what the situation was going to be. I have the vivid memory of Dad explaining to me the levels of bankruptcy mm. that in that we were there was the chapter eleven which one we were in exactly yeah, which one we were in I remember like him explaining to me it. at the same time he explained to me um, what a creditor was told me who some of our creditors were uh, and you knew were, them and I knew who they were and I was very young but that's something that I carried my whole life you never know when the rug can be pulled out from under you. You know, and that's a reality. We saw it in the business. Um, and we need to think about that with our business presently. The year 2000 was the first year that we had a big bumper crop countrywide. Didn't know what we were going to do with the corn. And farmers in July were starting to say, you're going to have room for all this corn? Not knowing what to do. So we decided to put it on the ground. That was a new thing for us. Midwest has been doing it for decades. So we thought that would be the first and only time we ever did it. <laughs> and we've done it every year since, except for one year. But even then, there still wasn't a huge sigh of relief. I mean, you were on the corn piles, tugging tires. Oh, yeah. Like we were, like... But it was like you could see daylight. The problem was our business was growing and then trying to keep the finances together mm -hmm. so we could support the growth. And it was such a balancing act, and Dad really threaded the needle with the support he had around him, the friends that he'd made, you know, Lee Mack, and just the banking relationship. It's, it's been total relational. The relational piece that hits home the most with me is uh, just what I saw and my father and my grandfather with uh, employees. So, you know, as a small child running around the farm and 
uh, just seeing the interaction, there were there were guys that would just walk through coals and plow through a brick wall for my grandfather and my father. And so that, that kind of uh, struck me as a young child, just the relationship that existed there that was much more than your typical employer-employee relationship. And, and that's certainly uh, the vision that we have uh, going forward. They look at you more than just an employee, you know. Um, like when I first started, maybe I hadn't been there quite a year, and my brother had passed away, and Chad Nagel, he was even there to um, come to the funeral. And when I went to introduce him, I was about to say my boss, and he interrupted me before I could get it out, and was like, I'm, I'm his friend Chad. Our company is really a faith-based company. We don't push it on anyone, but we know in our business practices and our dealings that our faith should shine and come forth. Um, we try to be honest with everyone, and God created us all equally. You never have to deal with any angry people or any cursing you out or anything like that. And that's the way it's supposed to be when you work for a company. You're always supposed to feel welcome, feel loved, and feel needed. David's always been a big part of it, the community. He, you know, he, he would help you if he could. You know, uh, he never asked for anything in return. You know, it was out of the goodness of his heart. And Jan played a big part of that too. It's almost like they can't say no when someone asks them. So there's the school projects, there's the 4-H projects, there's the uh, different fundraisers for people in the community, whether it be through a fire department or the Lions Club. I believe every business, not just farming, should surround themselves with people that they trust uh, because no one person knows everything. And the advice that I get from Chad, uh, the way that I'm treated, the way that we have to do business, even with the handling of our grain and the selling of our grain, it's all proper, it's all done professionally. Uh, and not just that, there's still that feeling, uh, because I do know the family, that we're, we're just friends and, uh, and we trust each other. When a farmer shows up here, he's gonna get the same service every time, all the time. We're always looking for efficiency and quick turnarounds for our farmers so they can get to the field and get back. And by doing that, uh, we're trying to develop um, value for our customers. Without the farmers growing their crop, we wouldn't have a job. So I thank God for them. We're meeting the demand of a hungry world, you know, so it's an important job and it's an honest job and it's one that's got uh, value and always will going forward.